There is a time and a place to heap praise and to be positive about a person or a place. And then there's a time and a place when it's inappropriate. And right now, in this moment in time, it is inappropriate to be positive about China for many, many, many reasons. This video is brought to you by NordPass. This happens to all of us. You're about to get stuck into something really important and bam, what the hell was that password again? Either your session is timed out or you've forgotten your password, you have to log in again and you just can't remember it. You swear it was the same password that you use on all the other different sites, maybe a little variation of it, but you know what? You're clicking that forgot password link again. You're getting the verification through your emails and your text messages and you know what? Enough of this stuff. There is a solution and it's called NordPass. NordPass is the answer we've all been looking for. Basically, it's like a safety deposit box for your passwords. It's fully encrypted and the best thing about it is you don't need to remember your passwords anymore. It stores them all. In fact, it can generate, auto-generate incredibly strong passwords. You know those crazy things with all the, the numbers and characters that no one can, in a million years could ever remember? It creates those for you and it stores them. All you need to do is remember your one master password. There's another invaluable feature of NordPass, which allows you to actually do a password health checkup. It goes and looks at all previously hacked databases and so on, and alerts you if your password has been compromised in the past. This allows you to change things up and kind of start fresh. You know, I wouldn't recommend anything to you guys that I don't personally use myself. And you know what? It is Cyber Month, and so NordPass has got a special deal going right now. If you go to nordpass.com slash serpentsaday and use the code serpentsaday, you'll get 70% off a two-year NordPass premium plan. Plus, you get an additional month for free, gratis, pay nada. If you're someone like me who's constantly getting frustrated with passwords, I'd definitely check it out. I have well over a thousand videos on my channel, many of them about the positives of China, which of course, there still are plenty of positives about China. I absolutely love the food, the people, uh, some of the innovations that have come out of China in recent years, like the whole e-commerce thing that they do there. Of course, China didn't invent any of these things, but the way that they have implemented them is pretty fantastic. You can order something and it'll arrive the same day from the Chinese equivalent of Amazon, that type of thing food delivery. There's all sorts of interesting ways that China has taken and adapted different technologies to become very efficient and interesting. But you know, societal problems are there. It doesn't matter which country, whether it be China, the USA, Australia, etc, etc. Every single country has its own societal problems to take care of and to look after. You know, you're always going to have a certain amount of crime, uh, homelessness, uh, you know, poverty, all those kind of things. And that is something that needs to be tackled by whichever relative country, and they will deal with it in their own way. And I'm not here to try and poke fun at or point or disrespect any specific country for the way they deal with their specific problems. What I am here to do right now is to criticize the CCP for the fact that they cannot even talk about their own societal problems. And they have to hide everything away to the detriment of the Chinese people themselves. What we see right now in the world is a very unbalanced look at China. And I'm talking about from both sides here. The Chinese government and Chinese state media only ever put out positive pieces about China that praise China to no end. This, of course, also includes all the social media influencers who the Chinese government are either paying directly or are in one way or the other incentivizing to make videos about China. None of their content can even ever bring up the subject of the negative parts of Chinese society or the negative parts of the Chinese government. The same influences, of course, will constantly heap criticism on Western governments and Western society. So as far as anything coming out of China is concerned, whether it be from the news or from the government or from uh, social media influencers or anything, really, it's all in service of painting this very amazing positive picture about China. Heck, even when there's a, a, a natural disaster, we don't get to see anything about the failings of the government, but we just see heaps of praise being poured on how the government responded in such a, a great way. For instance, with the recent Zhengzhou flooding, which saw countless people lose their lives in that major tunnel that flooded, and in the subway system, no official number was ever released, and even loved ones leaving wreaths of flowers to honor their dead relatives and friends had their wreaths hidden and removed, 
all you ever heard about from state media was how great the PLA was at cleaning up the flood damage. But the actual people that lost their lives, the important stuff, was swept under the carpet, never to be revealed. We never see anything other than over-the-top, positive, fluff-piece propaganda coming out of the Middle Kingdom. Sticking with the Middle Kingdom, though, any news that concerns the outside world within China, also coming out of China, is harshly critical of foreign governments, harshly critical of the United States when it comes to its homeless problems, when it comes to, uh, you know, the riots and racism and any anything that has been criticized around the entire world, including within the United States, of course, is amplified by Chinese state media and by Chinese influences and the, the compromised influences and so on. They love to criticize the heck out of other countries while not ever criticizing a single thing about China itself. Now, let's shift away from China. Let's look at the rest of the world. Here you have a bit of a mixed bag. Here you can see a little bit of uh, conflict going in between the different countries, different news sources. Some countries, especially those that are involved heavily in the Belt and Road Initiative and other uh, Chinese initiatives, will praise China constantly. Those who've been helped get into power by the Chinese Communist Party, like, of course, Tedros of the WHO, etc., they love to heap praise on China. Anyone who's trying to make a buck by engaging in the Chinese market are heaping praise on China. Any big corporation that has a big stake, you know, like the NBA or, let's say, Microsoft or any other big corporation that has something to do, fashion brands like Dolce & Gabbana, any of these big, big companies, anyone that's tied to China, they will only ever heap out positive praise of China. And if they make a slight slip up where China, another thing China loves to do is to, to claim victim of being bullied and, oh, you know, you've hurt the feelings of the Chinese people or you've offended us in some way. They make a big stink, throw their toys out the cart, and all these corporations and so on kowtow to China. So you've got that side of uh, almost a, a fearful praise of China. And then, of course, you get people that legitimately like the way authoritarianism works. They appreciate the way that the Chinese government has its boot heel on the people of China and can control everything, don't need to bother about the opinions and feelings of their own people to, for instance, build a road in the middle of a village or something like that. You get people that actually appreciate that harsher, uh, more ruthless side of the Chinese Communist Party, and so they root for them as well. Then, of course, you get the Western media, who's also a mixed bag about China. They can simultaneously either praise China or criticize China. Let's not forget that for the longest time, China has been trampling over the rest of the world, promising one thing and never delivering. IP theft, for instance. I mean, everybody knows China knocks off everything under the sun. Doesn't matter what it is, from electronics to clothing to any brand name you can think of. In China, intellectual property is not respected in the slightest. Although the authorities keep saying, oh, don't worry, we're going to clamp down on it. Don't worry, we've clamped down on it. Don't worry, it's okay. The same authorities saying that are the ones authorizing people, paying people, and in fact, infiltrating companies and forcing IP transfer over, stealing military secrets, you know, copy military hardware, helicopters, planes, you name it, anything you could think of, missile technology. They themselves are probably the biggest intellectual property thieves out there. And yet they're the ones telling the world, don't worry, we're going to make sure that, uh, you know, Chinese companies stop doing intellectual property theft. That's like a mafia boss saying, don't worry, I'm not going to steal from you. And then he tells all of his subordinates, go steal from him, you know. So as far as that's concerned, the rest of the world's kind of let China just roll over them. But IP theft pales in comparison to the human rights atrocities and issues that are going on in China right now. I'm not talking about the high profile stuff either. I'm not talking about the Xinjiang issue, which of course, I don't know what it's gonna take for the average Chinese Communist Party member to finally just come out and say, yeah, you know what, we made a mistake, or yeah, you know what, we want to do that, and that's what we're doing, because it doesn't matter how much they try to hide the fact that they've been doing some nasty stuff there, the evidence speaks for itself. We've had terrible things happening in Xinjiang. We've had terrible things happening in Tibet. We've had terrible things happening in, in, in Mongolia. We've had terrible things happening to all the minorities around China, many of whom I've met personally and spoken to myself. Hey. 
。喂，你叫什么名字？我叫温斯顿。你的衣服好，好看，好漂亮。So I'm speaking from first-hand knowledge here. They are not happy. Of course, they're going to be happy when the cameras are in town and when the tourist people or the, the compromised influencers or whoever else are coming there to do a thing because they have to be. And if they don't toe the party line, wear their stupid headdress, put on a smile and dance, they're going to be in trouble and it's going to destroy their entire life. They're just trying to survive, people. So besides the big ones that everybody knows about that have been talked about in the news, what about the average citizen of China? You know, that's the thing, the normal everyday person. There's such a vast wealth gap in China that I fear that most people don't really understand. It's not like a lot of the developed world where, yes, you get a middle class, you get a, a rich upper class, and then you, you get poor people, you do get homeless people, etc. But in China, it's different because in the West, everybody still has the same opportunities, the same freedom of movement, for instance. Just because you're homeless doesn't mean you can't go and work in a different state if you get offered a job. Doesn't mean you can't just travel somewhere else if you have the means. Just because you're down and out on your luck doesn't necessarily mean that you will not be able to apply for a job in a certain city, etc. China's different. They have a hukou system, which is a residency-based system. That means that you cannot, for instance, if you were born in the rural area, you are marked. You have a like a passport that says, you are a rural person, and this rural person is not allowed to have access to, for instance, free schooling in the cities or any of the social amenities in the cities. In fact, you can't even rent in certain cities in certain areas because you are a rural person, as it says. Imagine that. Imagine being branded because of where you were born and not being able to be given the same opportunities as everyone else in your country or in, in a neighboring city just because of the place you were brought up in or born in. That's China. And of course, when it comes to the law, the less connected you are, the poorer you are, the less chance you have of ever winning when it comes to any kind of legal situation, the less opportunities you have. The little man in China really suffers greatly, and they have no recourse. They have no government programs helping them out. There are no soup kitchens, for instance, there to help the homeless, and meals on wheels and that kind of thing does not exist in China. You have to eke out an existence, do whatever you can, and it's a hard, harsh life. And it never stops. By the time people should be retired, pensioners, you see them trying to sell vegetables on the side of the street, or knickknacks, or do anything, dig through the trash to get cans for recycling just to be able to continue support. And if it wasn't for the very strong family structures in China, it would be an absolute disaster because it's the family structures and it's the people looking after each other, not the government looking after the people that keep China going. I think some of you may have gotten an idea of just how bad it can really be in China with this whole Peng Shui debacle. You know, this famous tennis player who accused a big politician of sexual assault and coercing her into a relationship and, and being a mistress and all this kind of thing. We've seen the absolute crazy dance that the Chinese Communist Party has tried to do now that it's been caught out. You know, she went missing and she would have stayed missing, just like Fan Bingbing or any of the other big high profile people that have just gone missing in China in the past. She went missing. And if it wasn't for the Women's Tennis Organization Association, sorry, uh, calling for information on her, on her whereabouts and on her welfare. And if it wasn't for all these famous tennis players and this big thing heating up in the Western press, she would have just remained missing and silent. So we've seen how the Chinese state media stumbled over itself trying to prove that she's okay, releasing crazy, ridiculous emails, staged photographs, finally getting her to speak to the IOC uh, chairman, which of course they own the, the IOC, you know, the, the International Olympics Committee. Of course they own them. The, the IOC's got too much invested in China to, to make the wrong step. We've seen this craziness happen. And this is to someone who's an international super tennis star, a sports athlete that's known very well within China and out. And it took so much immense international pressure for them to finally let people see that she's still alive. Just imagine your average everyday person in China, how much they suffer when they make a misstep with the law, or if they piss off the wrong person, or if they get involved in the wrong scandal, or they just happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. 
it's disastrous. China has such potential to be such a wonderful and amazing place. I've experienced the entire country myself, and there is so much good to be experienced in China. The problem is that it's going backwards and it's being held back by this paranoid, immature, horrid government who just cannot ever accept any criticism and isn't willing to change at all and expects everybody else to bow down and change and compromise in order to deal with them. This is not something that's going to ever lead to any kind of good or positivity in the future. So we have to call for change. And there are things that we can do. Number one, let's boycott the Beijing 2022 Winter Olympics. That should not be an event that should be held right now, not under the current circumstances. Boycott made in China goods. Do a little bit of research. Pay a little more. Buy something that's made in Vietnam or Thailand or Taiwan or Japan or in the USA or Australia or wherever. Try to avoid feeding the dragon. We should be doing our best because China needs to be taken down a notch or two. The Chinese government needs to realize that it cannot simply bully its way through the history and expect that everyone's just going to kowtow and bow down to them every single time they say their feelings have been hurt. Do what you can. And remember, we're doing this for the right reasons. We're doing this so that we can level the playing fields. We're doing this so that we can give the people of China a chance to see that there's more than this authoritarian dictatorship which does not allow them to control their own destinies. I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, you know the drill, as always. Stay awesome.